Hey all, I am Kasim Sheikh and welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we'll see how to implement a Swagger in ASP.NET Web APIs. Now, Swagger helps in an, uh, uh, it could be a specification or you can say a documentation or a graphical interpretation of your uh, uh, Web APIs, uh, which helps uh, the consumer of your APIs to read uh, and understand your APIs and all the methods and services easily without getting into the source code. So you can go to swagger.io for more details about the Swagger. Uh, let's start with uh, opening the Visual Studio. This Visual Studio 2017, it's still in preview at the time of recording this video. Uh, let's quickly create an applic uh, a new project. ASP.NET project. Uh, let's give it a swagger net web app. Sorry for the naming. Select web API. Okay. So this will create a basic web API application. Uh, uh, let's run it. So you see, you can see that there is home controller. Okay, this is okay. So this is values controller API dot values. Let's go to that URL API dot values. Okay, fine. So it's running absolutely fine. Now uh, let's implement Swagger. Let's open up Solution Explorer. Go to project right click and open up new get package <coughs> manager go to browse and uh, type swash buckle cool so the very first is it right so this is uh, an uh, it helps to implement a swagger ui into our application Let's click on install. It will take few seconds to get those libraries into our application. You can see here there is an app start folder. By default it has this four config files. Click on OK. So once this get installed, okay, now notice there is a file name swagger config which is being added, right? So let's build it. And now let's run it. So now let's go to a URL swagger slash UI slash index. That's it. So as you can see, we have an uh, values controller over here. And this all get method, get with an parameter ID, this post put and delete all this method is now listed over here you can test it you can so this is a string just click on try it out and see it will gives you the same response response code its headers and everything so it's very simple just add an swash buckle and into your application and this will get implemented now uh, let's do something let's uh, add here some comments uh, this will list all details mm, let's add something over here this will provide details 
for id let's give some comments for id mandatory anything so as you can see i'm adding some comments you can uh, you uh, it's in best, best practice you can say uh, or in recommended settings or in recommended uh, practice for having an apis to comment it for uh, providing the description of what it actually does so that it could be used it could be reused or many things many things so how to list these things with what is what is being commented now you will say that we have added swagger for having a better uh, understanding of an api and then if you are writing a comments into the code so how come this uh, could be seen to an external entity to an swagger so it has an uh, provision like as now i have added let's go to the swagger config cs and if you come down if you just scroll it you can see that would be an okay this section include xml comments the comments which we added over there we can bring it out or we can display it in our swagger ui so just comment it out okay so it will give an error as this method doesn't exist just click on method create a method let's go to this let's make it a string sorry okay and here we can pass on the path where it will generate this comment so it has written system dot abdomen dot this current domain dot base directory and this will sorry <coughs> so we need to give a path uh, where this so xml comments are uh, like it gets being for an output or so so we can get that path just right click over here go to properties click on build and check this box xml documentation file so it will provide you an path that is bin uh, application name dot xml this is the application name swagger net web app swagger net web app just go to sorry, config and pass this i just given then uh, a location for getting this xml comments that's it let's save it build it and now let's run it directly go to swagger.ui.index click here so now you can see the comment which we added this will list all details over here right this will list all details this will provide details for an id so this was for get id it is here this will provide details for id we gave in some comments for uh, the id parameter that is mandatory so it is being listed see here so it's being listed in description so it's very uh, easy or it's you can say a very uh, a recommended thing to be added into your api while designing or developing an api to get the swagger included into your application uh, as i've added an uh, xml comment there could be many things you can do it like if you go through this file you will get an you can change the name you can give some other version name or some other customized title or something like uh, okay fine we'll do this title of my api okay similarly you can uh, change the css of this uh, let's run it let's go to swagger ui index so now you can see we have changed the uh, title you can change the version you can even give some cosmetics to this ui some color changes and whatever things whatever you can just uh, 
think of like you can apply css you can apply some javascript files you can customize this in a best way and the whole entire thing lies in this so swagger config.cs so all the things are being commented out it is all are commented you can uh, just uh, uncomment it as and on you need to work on it and it will it gives an very easy or very uh, graphical uh, specification of your api so hope you have enjoyed or learned this or uh, something new in this video uh please watch my next another video which in where i can uh, we will be saying how to implement the swagger ui in asp.net core 2.0 web apis so kindly like my video kindly subscribe to my channel and happy coding thank you bye bye